My name is Rachel Coleman, and I go by the uh, internet name Popju, and I am a music blogger, and I also uh, book and promote shows in different places in Brooklyn. And what kind of venues do you book shows in? Uh, I mostly book in the DIY venues and then a few bars. I book sometimes at uh, Brewer Falls and Cake Shop, and I like those places a lot because I feel like it's like a DIY feel kind of, even though it's a bar. And why do you prefer DIY venues and more low-key venues than big rock clubs? I think that a more low-key venue or a DIY law space always makes the show feel intimate and kind of like a party. Like you feel like you're like with a bunch of people and making a connection rather than sterilely looking at something happening. I feel like there's more of a connection between the performers and the audience and just everybody. In the last few years, people have been talking a lot about loft shows and DIY shows in Brooklyn, especially I think more than any other city. Do you think it's something? there's something special going on right now? I do think that there's something special going on in Brooklyn. I think that there's so many people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff and so many places to do it, which is really awesome. But I think that one of the reasons why there's all these lost spaces in Brooklyn is because we don't have um, house shows. You know, if yeah. you go to another city, there's someone with a huge house and they're going to have this huge house and there will actually be a house party. There's really nowhere to do that here at all. And I think that that's one of, the, one of the reasons why the need has evolved for these things because some bars don't want to put on these kind of shows. They don't want to put on crazy punk shows. They don't want to put on shows that aren't going to necessarily make a ton of money. So that's where the lofts come in. They're low cost and you can just keep doing it. The first shows that I ever booked were in high school and they were for uh, ska and punk bands in my hometown. And I actually did a lot of them through my Temple Youth Group. We had this thing called Gefilte Fest. And I just used it as an excuse to get like punk bands I liked up to my temple and things like that, which was really fun. And apparently that's still going on in uh, Temple Israel of Northern Westchester. But um, yeah, and then um, in college I stopped. And then in after college I started hanging out and you know, the DIY space is getting to know people. And um, there were just you know, shows I wanted to see that weren't happening. And I was like, hey, I know how to book a show. Why don't I just do it? Why don't I just contact people and do it? And I started booking occasionally. And then I moved into the Silent Barn, which is a loft space. And uh, I started booking there. And that's really how I kind of got my sea legs and really learned the in and outs of how to do everything. Uh, so who are some of the, your favorite bands right now in Brooklyn or all over the place? Well, most of my favorite bands right now are probably not in Brooklyn. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love booking shows in Brooklyn is because I can help get bands that I like to come to Brooklyn and like help them. Because pe people who live in Brooklyn, they have friends that do shows, mm. but bands from other places, it can be harder for them. I'm really into all, uh, bands from Nashville, like Natural Child and uh, Daniel Pujol uh, and Jeff of Brotherhood. I'm really into White Wires from Canada, and uh, I really like Bad Sports from Denton, Texas. Oh, and also uh, Eddie Current's Impression Ring, they're coming up soon, that's exciting. Are you booking that show? No, I'm not booking that, I wish I'm not booking that show. Oh, sorry, one more band, uh, Good Night Loving from Milwaukee. Yeah, they're awesome. They're like one of my favorites, and I am booking a show for them, and I'm really, that's one of the, I'm so excited. Huh. How did you get your nickname, Pop Jew? I gave it to myself. I was starting a music blog and needed something to call it. And I actually called it A Pop Jew in Brooklyn is the full title. Um, because the two things that I really feel like are, you know, like the biggest things in my life are pop music and Judaism. Like, I definitely identify as, as a Jew. You know, I think that's an important part of my life. So um, just put the words together and it really caught on. People call me that in public all the time now. In the coming months, I'm going to be uh, leaving my current job. And I've never had time off in the past like four years. So what I'm planning to do, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to take a, a tour on Greyhound buses all around the country, from New York to the West Coast and back again. And I'm just going to see bands and see cities and just blog about it the whole time. And I'm really, really excited. So who are your favorite bands of all time? I think my only favorite band of all time is the Beatles. I think that my five favorite albums are probably all be Beatles albums. It's my ultimate favorite band. I really love Bell and Sebastian and Teenage Fan Club and uh, the Beach Boys and the Kinks, but really, like, the Beatles are so far above everybody else, I can't even put them in a list of five. So your mom is happy that you're on the Big Juicy? My mom is super happy I'm on the Big Juicy. I want her to come to the party, but she doesn't want to, because she thinks that it's going to cramp my style. Oh, I think there's actually going to be a lot of parents there. I know, I thought it would be a cool thing for her to come to. Um, you know, my mom's super proud of me, which I think is nice. But um, she told me she wants me to get a real job soon, so I don't have to live with roommates forever. That's what she said. That's all you can ask for from a Jewish mother. <laughs> At least she doesn't want you to be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah.